Good morning or good afternoon, whatever time this podcast is finding you at. This is my wake up podcast. You are not tired. You're just uninspired. And I am here to help you. I am the creator and founder of Life Minded and Free. I am focused on helping women who are unfulfilled live above mediocrity and create a life of their wildest dreams because you can have financial and time freedom. You can have a good marriage. You can have a good relationship with your kids. You can have a good faith, a good health. And I'm here to show you how not only I did it, but how I was able to teach thousands of other women to do the same thing. So welcome to the show. I hope you enjoy today's podcast. I've been building a business for seven years at home. I walked out of my corporate job because I just knew that I was made for more. And a lot of us have very similar stories. Like you just know deep down in your core somewhere that you're made to do something bigger and better and more powerful and make a greater impact. And you don't know what it is, but you just know that it's there. And so when you go to start this journey to change your life, I realized that the hardest thing to do to actually change everything is to get your mind in the right place and to start your day having the right thoughts, having the right intentions. A lot of times we just wake up and instantly go right into mom mode or wife mode, or we're just, you know, right away, like you open your eyes. What is the first thing? Oh, what time is it? Oh, I have to get going. And there's no time to even like stop and think about what you want to achieve out of this world and what you want to do. And a lot of times, because we're not connected to like-minded people all the time, you know, we're connected through business and we're connected through maybe, um, you know, colleagues from college or you're connected with these people who are great, but chances are they don't live right in your hometown. And so you're kind of doing life and you're going through this as being like an outsider of your town, of the outsider of your friends or the outsider of your group where everyone else is just okay being mediocre and not really changing a whole lot, but you're not. And so it's hard. It kind of sucks that out of you. And so if you stay connected in community and you get your mind right first thing in the morning, the slogan of the call is you're not tired, you're just uninspired. Because if you're operating out of inspiration, when you feel that motivation and motivation is an emotion, it's something that will come and go. There's no one in the whole world that's motivated 24 seven because it's just an emotion. So it's what can we do to get in a state where we are experiencing the emotion of motivation, which then inspires us to create. And you know, when you like are just experiencing those times of your life where you almost feel like you're high, like you're high on drugs, you're like high on life. You feel like, like, and sometimes it always happens at the very beginning of the year. I found that some people are really into a new year. And other people are like, oh, give me like June, like halfway through. And that's when I start. Like there's a point in your year that spikes you. Put it in the chat, whatever that is, whatever part of the year really gets you just so focused and so going. Maybe you don't go to the gym ever, but during this time you do. You uh, don't wake up early ever, but this time you do. There's something that you do that... Um, Uh, mine is January for sure. Um, and it's like all the excuses that I had up until that point, all of a sudden January 1st hits and it's like, all of the excuses are out the door and it doesn't matter how much time it doesn't matter who's in my way. It doesn't matter how much money, how much bravery I have in me. It doesn't matter. I am going to do what I'm going to do the holiday season. It just makes me so happy. So it trickles through on everything new year, new me always feel the new start. It's going to be life changing. Yeah. You just like feel it in your soul. You know, like, okay, I'm not playing around anymore. I'm doing this thing. And so you feel that in you, but why do you feel that just that one little portion of your year? Why is it so natural to you? It's because you're motivated, you're inspired and your mind has made up. We're doing this thing. And so you actually are in control of that feeling we don't realize that we're in control because we let our circumstances control us. We let our brains control us. You don't want to be controlled by your brain. You want to be controlled by your gut or AKA the Holy spirit, AKA God, AKA your intuition, whatever you want to call it, you know that you can make those choices. Your brain, however, has been reprogrammed by people who are, you know, 
causing harm on you. They've spoken lies over you. Maybe they've abused you. They belittled you. All of these people that you come in contact in your life have placed this on top of you. And therefore, oh, Laura, it's getting on. Therefore, all of this is stacked on top of you. And I was explaining to one of my clients that I was coaching yesterday that, good morning, Laura. Um, I was explaining to one of my clients that it's almost like you have these bricks that are all just piled on top of you and you cannot get out because you have all of this underneath you and you know what you need to do and you know how you need to do it, but you're just not doing it. And why are you not doing it? You're not doing it because you have all of these labels and all of these doubts and all these things that your brain is telling you. So we want to operate as much as we can out of our brain. Like people are like, use your brains. Like, no, don't use your brain. <laughs> don't use your brain. Use your gut. Don't tell you what your brain is telling you to do. Your brain is like, we can't do this. You're not worthy. It's never going to work. Nobody's coming. You're, this is a waste of time. You're not good enough. That You tried this before. You're going to fail. What are they going to say? What are people going to think? You know, that's where our brain is going. We don't want to listen to our brain. Oh, good morning, Emmy. Oh, look how cute she is. We also pause for baby breaks sometimes. So like, sometimes there'll be like a baby that comes in. We're like, okay, pause. Hold on. Everybody needs to say hi to the baby. Um, and my daughter, Skylar, we call her Chucky. Um, she usually comes like busting in with this crazy hair and she's usually just in her underwear. Like, I don't know. Yeah. That's why we stopped putting the video on YouTube. I'm like, okay, we're going to be flagged and taken down. for Like, they're going to be like, what is going on on this page? Um, but you really have to learn how to operate out of your gut. And the best way to do that is to find things throughout your day that can keep you super connected to your soul, keep you super connected to who you were meant to be, who you want to be. All of these things, if you are so distracted throughout your entire day and you're go, 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 or you're, what is this goal? And this is my plan. And I'm reaching out and I'm doing all these things. You're working hard. Like think about, good morning, Alicia. Think about like, you're like, okay, I'm going to work hard. I'm going on a 90 day run. <laughs> I love when I hear people say that, like, I'm going to go on a 90 day run, you know, starting right now, 90 days. And I'm like, oh child, like you are like, what are you doing right now? Like that is actually the opposite. Yes. Are 90 day runs amazing? 100%. Am I saying that if you plan for 90 days, you're going to fail and it's going to, no, of course not. But there's so many things you need to do before you're committing and going on this long-term run, you have to commit those things first and you have to really think about them, like really slow down and think. I have realized over the last year that the less that I try to work and the more it just naturally comes to me, the more successful I feel, but also the easier it is and the less I'm working. So I feel better because I'm not really working that much. And it's just crazy. I was thinking about that in the shower yesterday. I was just thinking about how it's the end of the month. And it's the time that I used to hustle so hard, so hard. Like the last week of the month, don't you dare ask me to do anything besides working. Do not ask me what's for dinner. Do not ask me what our plans are this weekend. Do not ask me what I'm doing after school. Like everyone in my family knows, mom is in her office. The door is shut. Do not come in here or I'm biting your head off. And I, the entire time I'm working like frantic because it's the end of the month. Like I have to hit these goals and I have, I really want to achieve my dreams and I want this to happen. And I'm like, I have to be all focused on this. Like mom's busy, mom's in here. And what I was doing and I was operating, I could literally like, I feel sick right now. Just thinking about how I would feel inside of me, like so stressed, like I need like two more ambassadors and who can I follow up with and where's my list and I need to call these customers and I need to, who, okay, who could I like, who could I really ask to help me out? Who can I follow up with? And, um, you know, can I place a bulk order or what could I do to like bring in this volume or, you know, you're like almost like scheming against it. Like, and, and you might achieve it. And I did, I did achieve it. I would always hit the goal. There was only one time that I didn't hit the goal that I set for myself. I always would hit it, but I would never keep it. And the next month, because I got it out of desperation and like total scarcity and fear, I got it, but then it immediately repelled away from me. And the next month I was in the exact same position. And then I'm like, 
here we go again. All those people who signed up last month, they just quit. And all those people. And then I'm like, what is going on? And it's this constant circle that we don't realize that we're in. But instead of, okay, I have to work. No matter how I feel, I have to power through it. I would, I literally had post-it notes up on my window in front of me. And one of them said, uh, well, I'll, there was a lot of bad ones. One of them said like sacrifice now so that you can have later what you want. Um, if it's hard, it's growing you. If it's hard, do in order to be successful, do as many things in a day that you don't want to do as possible. Because I'm like, everything that I don't want to do is going to bring me success is what I was thinking. And I'm like, of course I have anxiety against it. Like, I don't want to do it, but as many things as I can just power myself through and just bust through them, I'll be breaking through fear and I'll be successful. And that's actually not true. There's a lot of things that you shouldn't be doing and your soul is screaming them to you. Like, we don't want to do this. This doesn't feel good. I like, I don't want to send these messages or I don't want to do it this way or I don't want to operate out of this way. And someone told you at one point that you have to. So that's why you're doing it. And I made a post on Instagram the other day that says your intuition is always more important than someone else's advice. Because just because someone makes more money than you or just because someone has lived a, a wiser life than you or they've gone through more than you or it doesn't mean that their answer is always right over your own intuition. You know what's working for you. You know what you feel drawn to do. And no matter what it is and how crazy it is, you can do it. I've been talking to like four or five people a day that have been booking on my calendar to talk about discovery calls and to tell me like what their big scary goals are and dreams. And every single person almost who tells me, they say it like it's the most embarrassing, like they feel like a child daydreaming some fantasy thing that they want to do. And to me, like that's so sad that we can't even say the thing that we felt in our souls that we wanted to do. Whether your passion is for children with special needs or your passion is for empowering women in general or sex trafficking or making women feel confident or preaching the Bible or so I have this girl who's like, I want to, I want to quit my job so I can ride my horse and be with my horse all the time. And I want to do equine photography. And she's like, I've never done photography. I don't even own a camera. I have no idea how to do that. And I also work for the government and I can't just quit my job because like, how am I going to make money? But she's like, this is what I've always wanted to do. I literally sit at work and just daydream about this. Like if I could just go and she lives by the ocean and she's like, every time I get out of work, the tide is too high and I can't take my horse swimming. And I want, when the day is right and the tide is perfect, I want to be able to get on my horse and just go swimming with him. But I can't because I'm working. And she was saying this, like, it's like, it's never going to happen. And I just was like, this can totally happen for you. Like this can happen for you. If you focus on your goal of like what, not your goal of money or your goal of rank, you're not allowed to say that. You're not allowed to say, I need a hundred grand. You're not allowed to say, I need to be this rank. But what you are allowed to say is what is your soul super deep inside telling you that you want to achieve in this world? Think of things that you have always said you were going to do or things that you've always thought about doing. You know, like really think about that thing where you're like, wow, I have always said I wanted to write a book. I have always said that I was going to travel to this place. I have always said I was going to own my own business. Or I always said I was going to buy that car in cash, or I always said I was going to pay off my parents' house, or I always said that we were going to retire when we were 50 and travel here. Like, what are the things that you always said? Because those are the things that naturally come to you. So I'm such a huge advocate for journaling because it's really like your soul talking to your brain. Like when you're just sitting there deep in thought and you're like, okay, I need to like meditate and I need to think about what it's, your brain is still in control of, because it happens so fast and these questions and these answers happen so quickly that you can't even really connect with what your actual self is feeling because your brain so quickly has fear on top of it. So if you sit there and think like, okay, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? I want to write a book. And quickly it's like, you can't write a book. 
you barely even passed English class. I mean, that was me. I got a D minus on my, in my English class, my senior year, and I needed a D minus in order to get credit for the class in order to graduate high school. And I walked in and I, I was depending on this exam. I had to have at least a D minus on the exam to end the class in D minus. And I said, what did I get on my exam? It was the last day of school. And she said, I gave you a D minus and that was a gift. And I was like, thank you. And I barely graduated high school. So when I think of writing a book, I'm like instantly like, you can't write, who can even pass English class? And then I went on to go to college because it's what I thought I should do. And I took an online English class and I filled that one too. And then I quit college right after that. I was like, yeah, and I'm done. College isn't for me. And so with someone who barely passed two English classes thinks that I, I think I can write a book. When I operate out of my brain, there's no way I could write a book. But when I operate out of what the Holy Spirit is telling me to do and what my soul is telling me to do, like write a book, people need what you have to say, write a book. I will take care of the rest. You write it down. So when you're writing, it really is like words that you would never say out loud or things that you would never even really think to yourself quickly. You're able to write them down on paper because there's something magical about writing down actually how you feel. It doesn't need to make sense. Nobody ever has to see it. It doesn't need to be pretty. It doesn't have to just be dear diary or dear journal. You don't have to write it from the perspective of yourself. You don't have to write it to as a letter to yourself. You can change every single day how you write it. One day, it can be a list of affirmations. The next day, you can write out all the things that are hurting you right now, all of the things that you want to pray about. You can draw a picture. You can write a letter to yourself. Sometimes I write a letter when I'm in a really high state of emotion. When I'm journaling, I'll write a letter to my lower self. I've done that before. And when we do, we do soul revivals every year. Uh, this is our first official one with the name soul revival attached to it. But we've done these, this will be my third one, where it's a women's empowerment weekend. We all stay in a house together and we just flood everything that we need and get rid of everything we don't. And one of the things that we do on the last night is we write a love letter to ourselves who are feeling down in the valley. And then we mail it to ourselves. Um, I usually hold on to them for a few weeks and mail them. And then when you read them, it's a letter to yourself. And it's so great to do it when you leave the actual revival, because when you leave there, you're feeling so empowered. You're feeling so alive because you're with all of those people that are like-minded and you're doing all of that. And then maybe when you get home a couple of weeks later, you're feeling really down. And then you can read this letter to yourself. And how amazing is it to read this letter to yourself that says like, sister, we can do this. Don't forget you are chosen. Don't forget you are created for something great. Don't forget that you aren't believing those lies. And then you can read your own words later. So journaling is so important because you're actually listening to your soul and what that says. So if you're just work, 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 hustle, hustle, work harder, work harder, you're never listening to what you actually want to achieve. So it can't be rank and it can't be money. It has to be something that you've always wanted to do. Something that has always been deep down inside of you. And then why I love network marketing so much is because once you create this that once you know who you are and you know what you want to achieve, you know what you want to do, then from that point on, it's so simple because then you create this brand for yourself, you attract like-minded people to you, and then you lace in whatever you're selling. Because if you're truly creating something, your followers and your ideal person, they're going to need some things from you. Like me personally, if I'm coaching someone to live their best life ever, to be aligned with God, aligned with themselves, guess what? They need a devotional. They need a Bible. They need supplements that are going to give their body what it needs to thrive and to live and to be happy. And you need stuff to help you sleep if you're not sleeping. And so I can recommend all of these things because they're things that are going to help my client. So instead of thinking, of, okay, I sell this, uh, there's a post that I'm going to make coming up this week that says, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, what came first, the brand or the launch? You know, that's really like a lot of people are like, oh, you joined my team. Oh, great. Oh, great. Let's do an opportunity call for you. And it's like, hold on a second. <laughs> like you haven't even created your, you don't even know who you're talking to. It's like my analogy of, purchasing a McDonald's franchise and going out to the road and holding a sign that says, 
cheeseburgers for sale and you just start screaming it to everyone driving past. Like nobody is going to stop and buy your cheeseburgers because you don't have a building. You don't have the right signs. You're not saying the right thing. You're not attracting the right person. Nobody knows what you're offering. And it's the same exact concept. So you have to slow down to go forward. Just like the bow and arrow pulls back to gain momentum. And you're thinking like, why why are you pulling this thing back? It needs to go forward. When you let it go, it shoots super fast, way faster than if you took the arrow and just threw it (laughs) like way faster. And so you have to go backwards to go forward. So if you're in a place right now where you're feeling a little frazzled, you're feeling like scarcity is setting in, fear is sending in, it's the end of the month. Oh my gosh, I have these goals and what's going to happen. And I need this check and I need this money. And maybe you're not currently in a network marketing company and you're trying to figure out how to do this thing on your own, because now we have a lot of people. Some people are totally full-time network marketing. Some people are like, I'm not doing network marketing at all. I'm doing my own thing. Yes, exactly. April, like they don't even know what you're serving. It's like, do you want to eat here? You're not even saying cheeseburgers for sale. You purchased a McDonald's franchise. You opened a building. You have no signs up anywhere and you're screaming, come eat dinner here. Nobody is going to go there because they don't know enough. I mean, I even go on Google and I will look at food near me and I'll try to find a place. And if you don't have pictures of your food, I'm not coming to your restaurant. I'm just saying, I'm not coming there. I need to see your photography skills. <laughs> like, I don't even need to see your food. I need to see your photography skills. Because if you hired someone to take really nice pictures of your food, then I know what level your restaurant is at. If you're snapping pictures on your old Samsung, that you're snapping them in Snapchat, and you're putting a filter over them and putting them on your website, I don't want to eat at your place. I don't know what I'm going to get. It's the exact same thing. And now they say that on Instagram, your followers have six seconds or your potential followers have less than six seconds to decide if they want to eat at your restaurant. Six seconds. That's it. Like, oh, let me look. Uh, nah, I'm good. And it's even less. If you have nothing that defines who you are and you have nothing that's saying, this is who I am, this is who I'm looking for, then it's even less because people are so confused when they get there. They're like, I, I, I don't even know what this is. And they just go away. But if you click on it, because this is what happens, you, you, you slow down, you eliminate distractions, you think about who you are and what you want to do. You journal, you read, you listen to books, you spend the time with yourself and a pen and a paper and writing down what you want and what you're trying to achieve. And then you focus on your brand. You build your brand. You speak to your person. You speak the exact pain points that that person needs to hear from you. And you learn how to do reels. And you get really good at that. And then your ideal person will see that reel. And they will laugh. And they'll think it's so funny. And they'll feel like, oh my gosh, this girl's hilarious. Or, oh, this is so cute. I love this. Or, oh my gosh, that's so true. Or, oh, I feel this totally. You know, those are all the things that you will know if you start seeing people comment that on your stuff and you start getting DMs of people saying this, you know that your stuff is making a connection with your ideal person. If you're not getting messages on a weekly basis, I would even say daily, daily basis. If you're not getting DMs and comments on and replies to your stories on a daily basis, what you're posting is not specific enough to a person's pain points to where they feel like, oh my gosh, I have to message Alicia. They're just like, oh, that's cute. Scroll, scroll, scroll. What you need is to say something that is so painful to that person. That's why you picture this person in your head. Who is the person you're talking to? And technically, or typically you're talking to someone who you used to be. That's like very common for someone to build a brand. And you're talking to that person and you need to actually sit there and put yourself in that place. How was I feeling? What was I thinking about? What were my fears? What was running through my head over and over and over and over and over and over and over? Whether you are leaving an abusive relationship, you are currently in one, whatever you're trying to do and whoever you're trying to give value to and love on and be a part of, those people are the people you're talking to. So making a list of those people and think about like, what is the biggest pain? You know, when I talk to all of you guys on the discovery calls and coaching calls, I have a a list in my notes section that says pain points. 
And as you talk and tell me the things that are going through your head and the things that suck and the worries you have and all that, I write them down because you're my ideal people. You're the people that I want to help. You're the people I want to relate to. And it's great if you go down in followers before you go up. I have a few people this is happening to right now who have just like declared this is my brand and I'm showing up as myself and they're starting to lose some followers. That's good. That's a really good thing because people are realizing, oh, I don't want to follow this person. And that's amazing because you're clear. I say things like sister, girl, girlfriend, um, mama, all the time. I don't really talk like that in everyday lingo, but I say it to get rid of all the guys that are going to try to coach with me or show up in my DMs or anything. Like if you're a man, I don't want to talk to you. You're not my brand. I don't relate to you. I don't want to get close to you. Been there, done that. Get behind me, Satan. I am looking for women that want to feel empowered. I'm looking for women that want to do something even more. Trimming the fat, absolutely great analogy, Cami. That is what losing followers is like. You're like, I'm going to get lean. I'm going to get ripped. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to be so strong and powerful. You're going to trim the fat in order to move forward. And when you trim it, you're going to be able to go forward even faster. And April sent me a really good, sent, I think to a lot of us, um, the analogy. And maybe when she comes back, I'll ask her. Um, the, the visual of what a room of a hundred people look like, what a room of 300 people look like, what a room of a thousand people look like, 5,000 people, 10,000, a hundred thousand. You can see the different size rooms and it's really amazing because it really puts it into perspective, your followers that are listening to you. The goal isn't to have 10 million followers. The goal is to have a thousand followers of people that are obsessed with what you're doing. That's it. That's all you're looking for. Everyone else, get away from me. I am talking to this group of people because it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality of the follower. Oh, that's amazing. Tracy says, as soon as I, so Tracy had a real, her brand is helping moms with children with special needs. Uh, She has a son, Liam, that she has totally devoted her life to and to other women helping them, um, equipping them with what to do and, and the things to become. And it's really powerful and amazing. And she made a lot of reels, but one of them got, what did you get? Like 7 million views on it or more? 8 million. Okay. She got 8 million views on this reel, thousands of comments, all of these followers, you know, things really blew up because this is what happens. You get super specific on your brand. You get really good at reels. You're trying to flood in your people. But what also can happen is if you see the, uh, I guess if you see the, the reels number, if you go viral before you're ready, if you go viral before your brand is ready, your verbiage is ready. If you're just like, oh my gosh, I just went viral. Like, I have no idea how it happened. Like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Chances are, those people are going to leave. And that's what Tracy said is a lot of them started dropping off after, which is great because she continued to be like, no, this is my message. This is my brand. Um, <laughs> hey girl messages or weird messages. Yeah. They're leaving <laughs> fast. Goodbye. Um, I bet a lot of, I bet a lot of people were all over you because of special needs stuff. They're like, I have something you should try, you know, people like that, which I'm thankful for that because we need people that, I mean, we take stuff, you know, for our kids and things like that. Oh, Emmy has the phone again. <laughs> Smashing it down. Um, but so it's important that you go, that you really get specific on your brand and then get focused on the reels and then do it. So this is why when, when uplines, and I just say uplines because it's usually like when someone is telling you what to do. And they're saying to, okay, you just, it's end of month. Like you got to reach out, do all those IPAs. I would be asking 20 people a day if they want to get on the opportunity call. I would be, okay, I'm not saying that doesn't work because I built a six figure business doing that. I know that it does work, but long term, is it going to work? No. Is it going to feel good and people are going to love it? No. Because what happens is people do what you do. So if you're recruiting 20 people a day or you're messaging 20 people a day, the average person is not going to want to also do this. 
And that's why right now it's only one out of every 10 people stay in network marketing because you all join for the hope of, oh, I'm going to have all this freedom. I'm going to have this freedom financially, and I'm going to have this freedom with my time. And then you get in and you realize how hard it is. And you realize you don't have as many supportive people in your close circle as you thought. And you don't really have anyone in your town that would host a party for you or do something. And so you just see that this is a lot harder than you think. And then your mind starts playing tricks on you and starts making you like, who do you think you are? You think you can do this? You think you're going to be like this huge earner in this company? You think you're going to figure this out? You're not going to figure this out. You've messaged everyone you know. Everyone has told you no, or everyone's ignored you. And you just think like, well, now what? And so they quit. And then you as the leader just spent how long with them? 10 hours? Over the last six weeks, 10 hours or more pouring into coaching, helping, and then this person just left. But what is magical and what is amazing about when you create your brand and you say, this is who I'm talking to, and you are so dang specific, the people you attract are going to want to stay with you because they already get you and they know you and they vibe with you. You'll never really connect with someone who's not like you. And what's crazy is that I can look back and see things that I've joined or people that I've joined or people that I followed or jumped into this circle with who are absolutely nothing like I am today. And the reason why I left them and left that relationship, and this has happened, I can think of like 10 people right off the top of my head from all, from even when I was like in high school. And I can go back and think that I left these people because I outgrew them and because I changed and I was no longer in alignment with who they were. So hanging out with them and taking advice from them and listening to them, I no longer respected because that's not what I was about. That's not what I was focused on doing. And so it's okay to outgrow people and it's okay to change because that's the whole point. You are supposed to be changing. And if you're getting up and you're putting yourself in the right mindset and you're focusing on doing all of the things to get you in a state of motivation, so then you can be inspired and you can create and you can go out and do all the things that you want to do. Well, then that's when true success comes in. And that's when you're happy and you're fulfilled. You're not just working, 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 working. Hopefully you're going to rank up, hoping you're going to help someone rank up. You know, because that's exhausting and you're depending on it all on you. So if you're in a company right now and you're focusing on the end of the month, then focus on slowing down and thinking about, okay, what is my intention here? What am I even doing all of this for? Who am I talking to? What are their pain points? And how can I start posting and showing up online as this mentor of this group of people? Because you can figure that out in a day. I mean, some, some people already have the clarity. They just don't know to think that way. And they just don't know how to tie it together. You can switch all of that and create that in one day. Or it can take you months. And just so you know, go with the first thing that comes to your head and just start posting and just start doing that because you need to just go out and start doing to then come back to the drawing board and think, okay, does this feel good? is this working? Do I like what I'm doing? Because the chances are, is that it's not going to be perfect. I've actually never seen anyone to do this perfectly. Usually you throw it out there, you start doing it, you come back and you're like, okay, I need to change these couple of things. I realized I need to do this. And then you pivot and you turn and you do that. I was talking to Alicia yesterday. And do you guys know that, that Amazon was originally created as an online bookstore? That's all Amazon was. That's it. That's all it was, is it was an online bookstore. How many times did they have to pivot and innovate and move to create Amazon that it is today? There is no one running a company that's like, oh, I built it and I ran with it and it was amazing. I became a millionaire and retired. It's like, no, I launched it. It failed. I relaunched it, changed it. It failed again. Then we added this. We hired this person, fired this person, got in realignment with a different person and then we got up to here, but then we failed. So then we came back and we fixed it and we added this. And then the world changed and we needed to pivot and we needed to add this. 
and this changed. So we needed to do that. That's what you're doing with your brand and your business. And your brand also is matching the path that you're going down. Your brand is who you are. So you might've been talking to, and this is what I was doing. I was talking to a while ago, my brand was talking to the person who is working a nine to five and absolutely hates their job and wants to do something big and bigger and better. And they can join my team. That's who I was talking to for a really long time. Then I changed that. And then I began talking to someone who was in network marketing already, already had the experience, but just hasn't seen the success. They wanted a mentor. They wanted to show up and they wanted to help be guided down this path of greatness. That's who I was talking to. Then it shifted. And then I no longer wanted to talk to that person. I wanted to talk to people who were making like three, four, five thousand $5,000 a month, but couldn't ever get anything higher. And I wanted to talk to that person because I wanted to teach them my ways and show them what I did with my brand to help change that. Now I'm talking to the person who is burnt the hell out of network marketing and is like, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing every podcast. I'm doing every training. I'm learning Instagram. I'm learning reels. I'm putting myself out there. I'm sacrificing. I'm doing IPAs. I'm getting on the Zoom trainings. I'm inviting people to the opportunity calls. I'm going to conventions, going to leaders trainings. I'm doing everything I can and this isn't working. That's who I'm talking to now. Because the reason why it's not working is because you're throwing spaghetti at the wall and saying, okay, who am I going to get out of this? It's not strategic. You can't duplicate it. And you're going to burn yourself out. It's going to happen. So you need to create your brand first and then launch what you're doing. And then launch it. You need to create your brand first and then lace in products for you. So look at who you are, what you're trying to create and think like, what, what could I offer my people that I could sell that you can have an affiliate code for that you can, I mean, there are so many companies now. And do you know that you can message these companies and say, I am a, I am a micro influencer. I'm an influencer online. I want to have an affiliate code to recommend your product. I love your product. Send me a code. They will send you a code. And you can be an affiliate marketer for them. So if your brand is fitness, any, anything that you recommend fitness wise, you can do it. And Tracy, I'm glad that you said that it has to be, it has to really be you. I like how you worded that and to be authentic and to be slow going because there is a training that I want to do um, <laughs> that's called catfishing your brand. And when people like catfish you of their brand where you're like, okay, this is going to be my brand and I'm going to post all things like this. And this is who I'm going to be. That's not really you. You need to be vulnerable and real and raw and honest and authentic in order for this to work. So I have people that come to me sometimes and say, okay, it's not working. Like I'm not getting people in my team because the number one way that you know that this is working, you know that your brand is good is if people are coming to you saying, oh my gosh, I had to send you a message. Oh my gosh, I feel so connected to you. Or, oh, wow, this just hit me so hard. This is exactly what I needed. You know, you have that. Like when you get those messages, you know that you're loud and clear. So sometimes if you're like, I, I feel like I have everything. I feel like I'm specific who I'm talking to. I have my, my profile picture. I have my highlights. I am good at reels. I'm posting what I should. I'm doing IGTVs and doing reels and doing stories and doing posts and doing carousels and doing all these things. It's not working. It's not working because you're not being vulnerable. That's the only reason. But your upline will tell you to reach out to more people. That's not the answer. The answer is not, oh, numbers game. Go out there and do more IPA sheets. Like it never is because there's something underlying. There's something that's like, wait a second. Why are you resisting this? When you're resisting something, when there's something on your to-do list that you're resisting, like I have this to-do list in front of me and here, and then I have like three more over here on my whiteboards. And I'm just, there's some things on here that I just like literally will not do. And I just keep writing them on here. And I just literally just don't keep doing them. And I'm like, why am I even writing this down? For whatever reason, 
I, my, I am like, no, I'm resisting this, this, I don't want to do this right now. So whatever it is, instead of fighting it and beating yourself up over it and feeling like you're a loser and I'm so annoyed with myself and I'm so lazy and I don't do what I'm supposed to. And, you know, instead of like going down that hole, think like, okay, why am I resisting this? And that's why a coach is so good for you because they can ask you those questions that you don't think to ask yourself, or they can listen to you. They can listen to the words that you're saying when you say like, yeah, for the last 10 years, I've been wanting to. And then it's like, oh, that's funny. Cause you just said for the last 10 years, obviously you feel called to do this. So why are you not doing it? Like, let's really get down to the root cause. What is it? What's holding you back? Well, And then you're like, yep, got it. Like, that's really what the resistance was. The resistance wasn't, you didn't know how to do IPAs. The resistance was that you weren't clear about what you're doing. And, you know, I'm all about working smarter, not working harder. So if you randomly message a hundred people, what are the chances that out of those hundred people, they will be your ideal person? I mean, the, the percentage will change based on your own Instagram. I've been building up my Instagram with network marketers for a really long time. So pretty much like all of my followers are network marketers or a lot of them are. And so I would say if I messaged a hundred people, chances are maybe 50 of them would be network marketers. Let's say half of my followers are network marketers. If you haven't been building your brand and being consistent with that, and you just have like random draw of Instagram, How many of those people are going to be your ideal person? Probably a lot less than that. Do you want to message a hundred people and you really only have the chance with 10 of them? Or do you want to message 10 people and spend your time on all 10 people because you know that they're your ideal person that you can connect with and you can help them out of their own valley? We are drawn to people that can help us move further ahead in our life. So if you can show someone, I am further ahead This is what I did. And this is how I can help you cut over through the valley onto this bridge. Then they're going to be drawn to you. So one of the best things that you can be spending your time doing right now is sitting down with a pen and paper and you writing out all of the things that you felt and the thoughts that you had in your head and the struggles you had when you were going through whatever you're trying to help someone come through. Who was that person? How do you feel? How do you remember handling that? And making that list and then thinking, how can I turn all of this into content for the week? How can I come up with 10 posts about all of this? And April, they say on um, Instagram right now, you should be doing like two to three IGTVs a week, five or like eight to 10 stories per day. Um, how many posts and how many reels? I think it really just depends on who you are watching. I think that Brock Johnson, I'll pop on Instagram real quick and look, but Brock Johnson's a really good one to, to watch. They have Insta Club Hub which is an amazing tool if you're just getting to know Instagram or even if you kind of already know, but they really stay up to date on a lot of things um, and really keep you in the know because Instagram is like always changing, you know? So they're a really good one. And I think he just posted something the other day. I I can pop on there and look, but um, yeah, I think it's really just utilizing all the tools available on Instagram. They want you to make lives. They want you to make reels. And um, even regular posts are still good. But the carousels are really what's the best. And the carousel is when you post more than one picture and then people slide through it. Um, I know that they used to not be so good for the algorithm, but now they're really good. <laughs> so see what and- I mean? Conversation is changing. Well, and I mean, just think of like what your, what your own self is doing when you're on Instagram, like really pay attention to your own habits and what you feel drawn to and what you feel connected to. So when you're just scrolling on reels and you click on one and you see one, you're like, oh, that's so funny. And you click on the person's name. Like, what are you doing? You click on their name, you scroll. What else are you looking for? Are you watching some of their stuff? Are you clicking the link in their bio? Are you like, oh, that sounds interesting. Like you want people to go down that hole with you 
I'm like, oh, who is this? Oh my gosh, I love her stuff. Oh, what is this free guide? Okay, enter in my information. Like, this is great. You're going through all of that. And I never read the captions ever. Never, ever, ever do I even look. I look at just what you can see. And then it's like dot, dot, dot. I never click more. So, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say never. Maybe one out of every 10, I will. I'll click more and I do not read the whole thing though, ever. I just kind of like skim and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But on those carousels, you take what you're saying and you're putting it just there where you will scroll and you will read people's stuff. And that's why it's so awesome to be able to do that. Yeah, follow. He's, um, his name on Instagram is Brock 11 Johnson. And I do not get paid or anything to recommend him or neither does April. (laughs) We wouldn't be opposed to that, but he is amazing and everything that he does. So where I come in is mostly your, okay, you know that you're made for more, you're ready to do something, but what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And so I help you to create that. And then you would move to someone like Brock. That's like, okay, now that you know what you're doing, here's what you need to do. Here's how to hack Instagram. Here's what to put in your bio. Here's what your highlights should look like. Here's what you should say in your caption. Here's how many times you should post a day. He even has the thing like April just said, the Insta Club Hub on Facebook, a group that teaches you and helps you do, you know, all of these things too. So um, it's like you first have to do this and then you can bring in the leads. Then you can be successful. So stop saying that you're not successful. Stop saying that it's not coming to you fast enough. Stop saying that your success isn't here or it's never going to come or I'm lazy or whatever it is, but instead replace it with, I am not ready yet and have not launched my brand. So it's actually pretty astounding that I even have anyone that feels connected to me. Like really, it truly is. If you don't have your brand right and your page, your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever is all over the place then it is literally incredible that you've even been able to attract anyone to you that has stayed with you. That was just all on grit. Imagine now when you stop working so hard and you let God do the business for you and you let him bring people to you, then imagine what can happen with that. I've been, so one thing that I, one thing I pray all the time is that in the morning, I pray this. And I also had this revelation this morning of like why you should spend time in the Bible and praying and meditating in the morning because I was listening to super attractor by Gabby Bernstein yesterday. I'm like re-listening to that whole book. And, um, in there, she was talking about how sleep is a really great reset for your mind because you go into a state of no resistance at all. And you're totally relaxed and you're not thinking and your brain is taking a break. So it is my favorite thing to do when I am living in scarcity and fear and anxiety and overwhelm and I'm in a bad mood and I just like can't snap out of it, I always just go take a nap. It's like my go-to thing where I'm like, I need to reset and start over. I need to turn my brain off. I have to nap. And it's actually like the best self-care that I can do in that moment. Even 20 minutes will change your life. If you're in that state of, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to lose my crap. Take a nap for 20 minutes. You'll be in no resistance, but the reason why you should meditate and you should pray and you should, you should journal right in the morning is because you have no resistance on you. You have no thoughts in your head. You, I mean, you might be thinking of like, okay, what do I have to do today? But it's easy to like, no, I'll talk, I'll think about that later. I'm going to do this first and then I'll do my whole schedule. So it's, it's easier to focus on that versus if you sit down at three o'clock in the afternoon and you're like, okay, I'm going to read my Bible. You're thinking about all of the things that just happened. You're thinking about what time is it? Because I have something that I'm about to do. What do I have to do tonight? And it's all blending together. And you're not able to truly listen and think. I pray in the morning for God to leave me breadcrumbs all day long and help me to be intentional, to follow them of where I need to go next. Who is the person who I need to talk to next? Who needs to talk to me? Who are you bringing into my life that I am going to be intentional about them coming into my life? Like, wow, that's amazing. Like you guys getting on the call. I know that God brought you here because that's what I pray for. I don't know if whatever you need to hear, or this leads you to your next thought, or this leads you to your next thing, or this confirms something or validates something or shows you what you don't want or what you do want. I know that we are all brought together on purpose for a purpose. And the one thing that I am really intentional of listening to is, like, what are, what do I keep hearing the same thing 
different people will say it differently. What am I keep hearing? And then if someone tells me about like, oh, you should read this book or, oh, this author, you have to check her out. I always go down that route because I feel like that is the breadcrumb that I should be following. And everywhere I go, I hear people talking about the power of prayer. Everywhere I go, talks about prayer, praying over your business, praying over things that the enemy is going to try to take from you, praying for discernment, all of these things that we need to be doing every single morning when we wake up, like protect my business from people that are going to throw it off. Protect my business from people that are evil or people that have bad intentions that are going to come in here and stir things up. Because let me tell you right now, you do not want to just recruit anybody. You're like, oh, I'm recruiting. Okay, open sign. I'll mentor anyone. Not only is it going to burn you out, but it actually, I've seen it destroy entire companies by having the wrong, toxic, rotten people a part of their company. And it is. And it contaminates the whole thing. So it can do it for your team. It can do it for your business. Um, yes, I, that is such a great point, Tracy. I'm so glad you said that because we don't ever talk about that to make your Instagram public because if you can't see any of their stuff, you're not going to follow them. You know, I need to see if you're my person before I do that. And so making sure your Instagram is public is a huge thing. And I needed to say that in my branding course, <laughs> like step number one, make sure your stuff is public. Um, and Cammy taught me this the other day. Um, if you wake up in the middle of the night, she said it, Cammy, you didn't even know that you made an impact on me, but I wrote it down as one of my aha moments <laughs> during our coaching call. Um, uh, she said, she's like, you know, God keeps waking me up between like two and four. And I know that if I get woken up between two and four, like he wants me to pray for something. I'm like, well, I wake up between two and four. You want to know, you guys are going to laugh so hard. You want to know what I think of when God wakes me up between two and four? So my mom is super crunchy, like too crunchy, like annoyingly crunchy, healthy, like annoying. You can't even enjoy your life around her because everything is giving you cancer and like ruining your soul. Okay, Like everything is like, she's like, uh, like at restaurants, she doesn't even get a beverage because she's like, oh, I'm not drinking city water with like all the fluoride and all that. No, thank you. I just won't drink anything. I'm like, okay. So like she's super healthy, which she had cancer, cured herself naturally. So I get it. You know, she does it to continue to be healthy, but she did this parasite cleanse. Uh, she's done a couple of them. And she said that one of the biggest signs, <laughs> if you wake up in the middle of the night at the same time, is that you have parasites. And so when I wake up between two, like when I wake up at any time at the same time, I look at the clock, it's like four or something. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have worms. <laughs> like I instantly am like, why am I waking up at four? Which is not always true. Obviously God absolutely <laughs> wakes you up and wants you to pray. But that's the first thing that goes through my head is like, why am I waking up in the middle of the night again? Like I need to do a parasite cleanse. <laughs> I'm like, so, I'm like freaked out. Like what's happening to me, but it's probably not. It probably is just God trying to get my intention. And that's so true. Especially if you're a numbers person and you look at the clock and it's the same numbers. You're like, every time I look at the clock, it's like four, 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 or, um, I almost said seven, seven, seven. That's not true. That time will never come. <laughs> so you're like, every time it's seven, 77, it's crazy. Um, you know, one eleven or whatever your numbers are, like those are actual biblical numbers too. I used to think it was like, woo woo, this like, oh, okay. You're like into the galaxy and the stars and where a lot of that stuff is connected to what God says in the Bible. And the power of like the number seven and the number four and the number one and the number 11, like it's really cool. So don't ignore stuff like that. And that's just total proof of why you need to be intentional and you need to eliminate distractions and you need to look around you at what's happening and how you're feeling and who's coming into your life and journaling and praying and thinking, because all of those things can be the sign that God's trying to give you. You're like, Lord, help me in this business. And then you just are freaking out the rest of the day. And he's like, oh, okay, well, I sent you this person. You ignored them. I sent you this book. You never read it. I told you to do this. I put this person in your path and told you to pray. And then you still didn't pray. And then I told Taryn to tell you to read your Bible every morning and you still haven't. And you, you know, and it's because we're just distracted and we don't even see the answer. So be really intentional of following the breadcrumbs. And being in tune with yourself and what are you doing that feels good and what are you doing that feels bad?
Like what it feels good and what feels bad. And then do more of what feels good and do less of what feels bad. Spend time with yourself today. Journal how you feel. Journal where you feel like God is moving you in your next phase of life. Journal about this call. Journal what thoughts are going in your head because it's so great to look back on yourself and to trust yourself more because you'll start to look and see like, wow, I journaled about that six months ago and it took me six months to finally believe myself and do it. Then you'll start trusting yourself more because you'll be able to look back and be like, oh, I was right. Oh, yep, I was right. Oh, yep, I was right. So you're like, now when I have this feeling that something's off or I'm resisting something, I need to listen to it because I've been right every time before. And you will never remember that you were right before because your brain is tricking you so that you can't remember how your soul felt. So that's why you need to journal so that there is no trickery. It's black and white. This is it. It's like your soul is being held hostage by your brain. And the only communication you have to get out is when you're writing it down on paper or when you're praying or you're meditating. That is the only time. So let that out more and be more intentional and watch your entire life change. Watch your happiness just bloom, become fulfilled, become aligned, feel alive. And you feel less stressed and less scared and less worried and everything just becomes more. So thanks so much for listening. I hope that you enjoyed my wake up call today. There's a few things that I want to mention before I let you go. One is if you haven't watched my number one secret to six figures in network marketing, head on over to my Instagram, which is at life.minded and click on the link in my bio. You can find that video there. It is phenomenal. Some of my favorite books, some of the biggest things that have changed my life in that industry. Another thing I wanted to mention is if you feel like I could add value to your life, go ahead and click on that link and book on my calendar a 30 minute discovery call. This is completely free and you'll get to know me a little bit better. You can ask me any questions you have and I can tell you what it would be like working with me one-on-one in a coaching program or a little bit more about my branding course. My branding course can be found at mentoringthemasses.com and that is a lifetime guarantee. You get lifetime access and if at any point you are dissatisfied, you get 100% return on your investment. That's pretty great. And then don't forget to like and follow me over on Instagram and YouTube. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel and set it to have all of the alerts, you will get a notification on your phone every single time I post a new video. Thank you so much. Remember, I believe in you. I love you. Thank you for following me. God bless you.